Today, we're talking about the next great hip hop civil war. Now, I feel like a lot of YouTubers and creators have only really been focusing on the current era between Drake, Kendrick, J. Cole, Future, Metro Boomin, and others. But I wanna dive even deeper. Let's talk about what happened before this era of hip hop. We need to discover how the first great hip hop civil war actually encouraged and influenced what's going on now and how all of this is going to play out in the future. If you're excited to see this analysis, please hit the like button. Hitting the like button seems simple, but it's actually going to open up doors in the algorithm so that more people can see this video. And also hit the subscribe button if you like what you saw. For those unfamiliar, the East Coast West Coast hip hop rivalry was a dispute between artists and fans of the East Coast hip hop and West Coast hip hop scenes in the United States, especially from the mid 90s. Focal points of the feud were East Coast based rapper Notorious B.I.G. with Puff Daddy and their New York based label Bad Boy Records and West Coast based rapper Tupac Shakur, who, by the way, was born in New York, but that's a whole nother story with Suge Knight and their Los Angeles based label Death Row Records. The feud culminated in the murders of both rappers in a drive by shooting within six months of each other. Both murders remain unsolved. The rivalry ended with a quote-unquote peace summit in 1997 at the behest of the Nation of Islam's leader, Louis Farrakhan. A lot of younger people don't quite understand how influential the East Coast, West Coast hip-hop rivalry really was. The modern hip-hop diss started in the 1990s with this feud between the East Coast and the West Coast. There were a ton of diss tracks that came out that inspired a lot of hip-hop artists that we know today. Songs like Hit Em Up, F Compton, all of these songs fueled the fire of all the violence and tragedy that we saw during this feud. So let's keep this in mind. J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick Lamar were all born respectively from 1985, 1986, and 1987, which means by the time all of these gentlemen were about 10 years old, they saw the aftermath of the hip hop rivalry that we're talking about right now. And also let's not forget that Kendrick Lamar grew up in Compton during these years. Now, if he's in Compton, he's more likely to see all of the aftermath and seriousness of what the East Coast versus West Coast rivalry did. But what he also saw was the benefit that it had on the culture of hip hop. Since the late 90s, when all of this calmed down, this began the era of peace. During the era of peace, 2011 showed us that Kendrick Lamar would be featured on Drake's Take Care album, and which was incredible. They worked together very well, there was no issues, and everything worked out fine. In February of 2012, Drake invited Kendrick Lamar to open on Club Paradise Tour. In October of 2012, Drake and Kendrick Lamar appear on ASAP Rocky's album, Effin' Problems, and collaborate on Poetic Justice. And also, let's not forget, J. Cole and Kendrick were working on a lot of projects together during the years between 2011 and 2013, with projects like Temptation, Shock the World, and Wait for Tomorrow. So it's very clear that between 2010 and 2013, everything was okay between the three powerhouses. There wasn't a lot of feuding, there wasn't anything really going on, there was no issues. Until Kendrick Lamar took the first shot. Taking the first shot doesn't mean like pulling the trigger and shooting somebody. In hip hop, taking the first shot is really just means you made a diss song or you have mentioned somebody in a disrespectful way on a song, in a track, or on a record. That's what Kendrick Lamar did to Drake. On August 2013, Kendrick Lamar takes aim at Drake and the entire rap game on Big Sean's song, Control. But this is hip hop and them niggas should know what time it is. And that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale. Pusha T, Meek Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. Now, although Drake was not the main person Kendrick Lamar was aiming at, in fact, in the song, as you can hear, he was aiming at everybody. Basically, every single person that he felt was competition to him, he was saying, I'm going to take you over. I'm better than you. That's just that. What's interesting is that one of the only people that responded to that was Drake himself. Control the record, people still banging it, man. Where Where is Drake at with Control? 
I'm probably like as done as like the rest of the world is with that record. Like I think it came and it went, you know what I mean? And not to discredit it, like it's a good, it was a good moment. But at the end of the day, it's just like, it was like one of those sort of like fleeting, like Twitter frenzies that like, um, it was cool for what it was, you know, and I, I'm just into making like, my thing is like, I like lasting power, you know, that's my thing. I want you to still be listening to this album um, in the summer or, you know, next year. What I want this to stay in your car, stay on your mind. It's, it's like not even about the music, you know what I mean? It wasn't even about like the content of it. It just seemed to be about like, you know, all the bullshit and all the talking at the time. And now everybody's like over it. Nobody plays it. So here's the issue with that response. It's clear to everybody by this point that Kendrick Lamar is not only extremely competitive, but he wants a response. It almost felt like Kendrick Lamar was trying to bring back the spirit of competition in hip hop. Around the time of 2013, to be very honest, hip hop was not very competitive. A lot of people were just making songs and having fun. You know, SoundCloud rappers were a thing and, you know, everybody was just kind of doing their own thing. I think Kendrick Lamar was reaching for something. He was reaching back into the soul of hip hop to pull out the competitive nature that I think excited him back in the 90s when he was a child watching the East Coast versus West Coast feuds. So this is what's interesting at this point. We now see that uh, Drake's response was tepid at best. He wasn't very excited to even get involved with Kendrick Lamar. But once Drake made this statement, I think it set Kendrick Lamar on the path that we're on now on the path of destruction. Drake said, I know good and well that Lamar is not murdering me at all in any platform. So when that day presents itself, I guess we can revisit the topic. Because Drake basically challenged Kendrick Lamar in saying that he cannot stop me. He's not murdering me and he is not better than me. That's what set Kendrick Lamar off. On October 2013, Kendrick Lamar comes at Drake during the BET Hip Hop Award Cypher. And nothing been the same since they dropped control and took the sense of the rapper back in his pajama clothes. Ha ha, jokes on you, high five. I'm bulletproof, your shots have never been a trick. Pin a tail on the donkey, boy, you've been a fake. At this point, general audiences, Drake fans, Kendrick fans, and probably Kendrick Lamar himself was expecting Drake to come back at him with an actual song, with actual, you know, a record or a track, something that will kind of get this thing going. This is what Kendrick wants. Kendrick Lamar wants Drake to really get involved in this diss. And Drake was not having it. Drake did not take the bait. Kendrick Lamar at this point has put three entire relatively aggressive diss songs out that were some specifically toward Drake, others not. But Drake was at the center of at least two of the pieces of content that Kendrick Lamar decided to make. And Drake was not going for it. He just wasn't getting himself involved. Now, there's a couple schools of thought as to why this was all happening in the first place. Number one, Kendrick Lamar, again, we understand he loves hard competition. It almost seems as if he does not feel fulfilled as a hip hop artist if there isn't some type of competition or someone that he's kind of chasing after with regards to popularity or sales or anything like that, creatively even. I think a lot of people recognize as well that Drake, although he was not embraced by hip hop with open arms, he at least, we can say, is in the hip hop community. And at this point, people thought that from the response, Drake would create a song, a diss, or something that would go after Kendrick Lamar, but he didn't. This response did two things. Number one, it made Kendrick Lamar look like an absolute monster. It made this guy look like he's super aggressive, he's ready to go, he's ready to get at it. And it made Drake, number two, look like a punk. Like, at this point, you have somebody that's that has came at you several times on music, on record. And your response both times was just to talk to a magazine publication or a podcast? So between 2015 and basically last year, nothing was happening. The hip hop game didn't have any real fuse. There was nothing really going on. You know, it just, there wasn't anything really to talk about, right? Until. On October, 2023, Drake and J. Cole released their song, First Person Shooter. J. Cole and Drake, whether on purpose or by accident, finally woke up the sleeping bear that is Kendrick Lamar. From J. Cole saying that him, Kendrick Lamar, and Drake are the big three, 
However, in the same bar, he said that he, J. Cole, felt like Muhammad Ali really was another calling point to Kendrick Lamar to say, wow, this guy really thinks he's better than me. Because if you compare yourself to Muhammad Ali, who, I mean, who else are you comparing yourself? Muhammad Ali was considered the greatest of all time in boxing. So even if you say, as J. Cole, I think that these two other gentlemen are also just as good, but I'm Muhammad Ali. I'm at the top. I'm the greatest. J. Cole in that bar was positioning himself to be greater than Kendrick and Drake. And finally, Kendrick Lamar, after hearing this song, took some time to himself to think about how he wanted to approach this. Did he want to go to the magazines to talk about it? To a podcast to complain? Or was he finally going to do what we all thought Drake was going to do and create a diss track or at least feature himself on something where he responds to this through the music? On March 22nd of 2024, Kendrick Lamar goes on full attack mode on Future and Metro Boomin' song like that. Now, for obvious reasons, you could not classify this as a civil war at the beginning in 2012, 13, 14, and 15 because, simply put, Drake was not responding to Kendrick Lamar. It's only a war when two sides are attacking each other with equal force. At that point, Drake was not having it. He wasn't taking the bait. We couldn't call that a rivalry because Drake did not want to participate. However, since First Person Shooter, that gave Kendrick Lamar all the ammunition he needed to get this war off the ground and started. Now, there are so many parts of Kendrick Lamar's response in the song like that, that we could look through and go through all that, but there are plenty of videos that you guys can watch that does that enough already. So go watch those. But here, all we're gonna say is, Kendrick Lamar's response is finally going to do what we all thought was going to happen. This is finally going to be the time that Drake has to respond to Kendrick Lamar. This entire war is going to simply be a war of ideology. There are people like Kendrick Lamar who love hard competition, who love the olden days of hip hop back in the 90s where people were going at each other and some of the best tracks like Ether and Hit Em Up were diss songs that ended up being top number one hits in a lot of people's playlists and in a lot of people's hearts. Sometimes diss and competition can create an environment of innovation that can actually change the course of an entire genre forever. And that's exactly what happened in the 90s leading up to now. Kendrick Lamar wants to bring back the soul of hip hop. He believes the soul of hip hop is competition. It's dissing. It's being able to go at each other and really strive to be the best. And in order to be the best, you have to innovate. And he feels, no, he knows that Drake is not an innovator. Drake is vanilla. Drake is not creative. Drake has been making the same type of songs for years and years. This is how he feels. And Kendrick Lamar is calling him out on this. Drake, however, is very, very different. Drake believes in soft collaboration. This means that he's willing to work with anybody and everybody just to make a quick buck. Honestly, if he could work with a rock star, an R&B artist, a jazz artist, an African Afrobeats artist. I mean, these are the types of things that he wants to do to just add more to his resume as an artist. He's not very concerned about the culture of hip hop. Drake is not very concerned about the culture of, of dissing and, and competition. He doesn't care about that. Drake only cares about what satisfies him. He's not concerned about what satisfies the culture of hip hop. This actually explains a lot of Kendrick Lamar's imagery in the last few years with regards to him being a savior. Kendrick Lamar believes that he is the savior of hip hop because he is innovating. He's creating something. He's really doing something different. And that's actually part of the reason why he's part of the quote unquote big three. I do believe that J. Cole believes in competition, but I think he's more of a soft collaborator, which is why I think that he's more on the side of Drake. Because even if you look through J. Cole's career, he's been a feature on a lot of people's songs. In fact, a lot of people called him a feature artist for a long time, disrespectfully so, but he has proven time and time again that he does not need a feature on his own projects in order to hit number one or in order to have a really great project. So in one sense, J. Cole maintains not having features on his songs and albums to really show people that he is an artist in and of himself. But he also believes in collaboration because we see that he is basically a feature on everyone's songs at some point in time in hip hop. I still like, 
when it comes to competition, I'm just I'm I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about bodies of work. So I'm I'm basically talking about like you know, there's one guy who's s s up every night thinking about how to get better and how to do things bigger, and you know that's Kanye West. <laughs> So in every war, there has to be a winner. So who is the winner? Who will be the winner of this great hip hop civil war? Well, the answer is us, the consumer, the hip hop culture itself. We are the winners. Although hip hop culture is built off of the artists that engage in the art, the only way art can be engaged with is by the fans. So fans really are part, a huge integral part of the hip hop culture itself. So by Kendrick Lamar starting this war, by Drake finally getting involved in it, we the people are the winners at the end of all of this. The truth is that more competition brings more opportunities for innovation, record breaking songs and a narrative driven art scene that is important to the life of the art scene. An element in hip hop that has been missing for almost 30 years is innovation, is competition. An element that Kendrick Lamar is looking to bring back. And the truth is also that Kendrick Lamar is trying to bring it back by force. In, in order to really bring the, the spirit of hip hop back to hip hop, Kendrick Lamar has to go after the two biggest artists right now in the genre in order to get this ball rolling. Kendrick Lamar is tired of boring party hip hop, hip hop, you know, just, yeah, we in the club. Uh, hey, we, he's tired of that. Okay. He's spoken about it many, many times that the creativity, the engagement, the innovation, they're gone. Hip hop has became very corporate. And in fact, at the top of that hierarchy is Drake. Drake is the president and CEO of corporate rap. That's him. That's where Kendrick Lamar sees him. And it's not just Kendrick. A lot of fans see Drake to be an enemy to hip hop because Drake has done a lot of work to kind of stay away from the general overall vibe of hip hop, the messaging, the struggle. You know, what hip hop really does is it, it challenges you. And Drake does not make challenging music. In fact, many would tell you that Drake just makes music that complains about his sullied love life. And he doesn't really sing about anything else that's significant in this world or in our culture. Kendrick Lamar's aim is to topple Drake, to topple the image of Drake, because he's tired of what Drake has been doing to hip hop. Now, many people will ask, well, why does Kendrick Lamar have to do this through a diss? Why does Kendrick Lamar feel that in order to save hip hop, he has to topple Drake from his pedestal? What's the point of that? Let's imagine this. An entire forest, a lush, beautiful forest that's been growing for many, many years, ends up burning down because of a lightning strike. A fire goes throughout the entire forest, burning down every single tree and bush and shrub, everything that you can see around. All the animals run out of it and there's nothing left but a pile of ash. Well, did you know that that pile of ash is actually very important? Nutrients and, and vitamins and minerals that go into the earth from the ash actually tend to grow the forest bigger, stronger, and greener than it was before. In a way, Kendrick Lamar has to burn down the hip hop forest for it to grow back bigger and stronger. So yes, Kendrick Lamar feels that he has to go after Drake. And you know what? He might be right. Now, Drake has a decision to make, okay? If he disses back, that could solidify his place in hip hop forever. If he goes after Kendrick Lamar and it's a good diss, that's gonna make everybody in hip hop realize that Drake is no one to be trifled with. However, if Drake disses back and it's not very good, then everybody is gonna feel that Drake really has no place in hip hop and that just might accomplish Kendrick Lamar's goal of bringing him down a few pegs. And to be honest, the absolute worst decision that Drake could make is not dissing back at all. What that would do is essentially destroy Drake's reputation because Drake has made so many little disses here and there. He's made so many little innuendos here and there that it feels like at this point, if you're able to say it on stage at your concert, if you're able to talk to a podcaster or talk to a journalist about your feelings, why can't you put those feelings on a record? Why are you incapable of interacting in the hip hop culture with regards to competition? Why can't you make this diss track? And those questions are going to lead Drake fans to feel that he really has no place in this like we thought. Is he going to be competitive? Is he going to play into the hand of Kendrick Lamar? 
Or is he going to stay silent? Who knows? But at this point, Kendrick Lamar has already said that he has a diss track ready to go. So whatever Drake has to say, whatever he thinks he has on Kendrick, Kendrick already basically is done with the next diss track in preparation for whatever Drake has to say. That's pretty intense. So at this point, we'll just have to see what happens. But hopefully, whatever happens, it benefits hip-hop culture as a whole. We'll have to wait and see.